Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Atherton on Air. I'm Addie Shaney. Fall break is over and we are all somewhat adjusting to online school. One year ago, who would have ever thought that we would be debating such things as Microsoft Teams versus Google Meets? Atherton on Air reporter and Aiden Hall breaks it down for us. Hi, I'm Aiden Hall, and if you've been in school over the past five weeks where we have been using non-traditional instruction, then it is likely that you have used Microsoft Teams and or Google Meets for your classes. If you are like me and have a mix of both due to teachers' personal preferences, then you probably have noticed the differences between the two applications and how they affect your overall class experience. But before we go over the differences, what do they have in common? To start, they both are video call programs with mute and hide camera buttons, waiting rooms, text chats, the ability to share your screen, and the ability to see your classmates and teachers. Now, that's all very basic stuff. So what are the main features that separate Microsoft Teams and Google Meets? The first thing you will notice is the layout. Google Meets has a grid layout that lets you see multiple people at once, and Microsoft Team will only have whoever is talking or presenting on the screen. One other big difference is that Microsoft Teams has a raise hand button that can be used to be called on, answer simple questions, or show your attendance. These features can make a massive difference, making people prefer one over the other. I personally like Google Meets more for its grid layout, but at the end of the day, it's up to per personal preference. For Atherton On Air, I'm Aiden Hall, and what you do makes a difference. What do students have to say about the great Teams versus Meet debate? Let's find out. So I like Google Meet better. Google Meets, you know, it's like just in the browser already and stuff, and you can like see everybody, or at least the people who turn their cameras on. And I much prefer that because then I can see people and stuff. I prefer Google Meet over Microsoft Teams because Google Meet just like works better and it like all runs smoother and it's not as like laggy as Microsoft Teams is. So I think of the two, Google Meets is definitely worse because the connection is just awful, at least for me. Um, everything goes like 10 times slower opening a new tab or working on another tab or typing in chat or raising my hand or um, I'm meeting my mic, so it's just just not a great um, thing in terms of connectivity. I like that you can see your classmates, but for me, that's just not enough to justify an awful connection. Well, I believe it would everything would run so much smoothly if you had Microsoft Teams, and I think one of the biggest factors for that would be the hand-raising you know, thing. Some people might just have a difficulty or a problem with whether or not they can have the camera on. So, with raising your hand virtually in Microsoft Team, I think it would be the biggest helper. Without a doubt, the past few months have been rough in our country, and in our city. The police shooting of Breonna Taylor and the protests that followed have pushed Louisville into the national spotlight. The critical issue of racial and social justice is at the center of many of our minds. We asked some Atherton students to share their thoughts and concerns. My concerns is that the youth, people younger than me, even though I am a freshman, um, we'll continue to have to go through what so many people before me have went through. Um, you know, it's a concern because it's nothing that nobody should go through, no matter what the race, gender, or whatever the situation is. I believe, I believe the protests and everything, I believe that's fine. And, um, you know, I believe it's sometimes, you know, needed after so many times of asking nicely or, you know, throughout the years and stuff, you get aggravated and, you know, things get a little more aggressive. Um, I think teachers at Atherton could just talk about it more instead of kind of pushing it off or being awkward about it, because I feel like some teachers are trying to not talk about it, but they don't want to seem like that they're ignoring it. Well, with Breonna Taylor, I believe that this is not justice, and I believe that someone should be charged with her murder. I do not believe she should have died for her mistakes or anyone else's. And I think that they need justice served, and I think all the protesting is fair for right now because there is no justice. Social justice isn't only an American issue. Discussions regarding equity and law enforcement are also topics of conversation in other countries. At the Turn on Air's film correspondent Will Seckman has more as he reviews a couple of foreign films that are equally relevant. Greetings, friends. It's Will Seckman for At the Turn on Air. 
Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we have all had to spend a lot of our life inside closed doors. And for a lot of us, this can be really hard. An enjoyable way to cope and escape through times like these is through film. Today I'll be presenting you with four film recommendations for your time spent at home. The first film is my favorite right now. Translated to Where Is My Friend's House, this Iranian film directed by Abbas Kirsami is about an eight-year-old boy's journey to return his friend's notebook he took by accident. If he fails to return the book, it will result in his friend being permanently expelled from his school. This is a very minimalistic and honest film that truly depicts what it is like to be a child. The second film, Down by Law, will lighten up your day. Written and directed by Jim Jarmusch, this dark comedy is about a disc jockey, a pimp, and an Italian tourist who escaped from a New Orleans prison. This is a fun and witty film with great characters and soundtrack. The third film, Wendy and Lucy, directed by Kelly Reithart, will move you immensely. This movie is about Wendy, a broke drifter, and her dog Lucy. Wendy's car breaks down in Oregon, and her dog goes missing. So Wendy has to frantically search for her companion in a town she does not know. This film is incredibly meaningful and discusses what it is like to be poor and female in America. The last film I'll be recommending to you today is one of the most powerful and relevant films I've seen in a while, La Haine. Directed by Matthew Katzowitz, this film is an unflinching and shocking tale of racial tension and police brutality and the banlieues of Paris. La Haine explores the cynical nature of hate fueled by prejudices and racism and the effects of gun violence. This film is far too important and relevant to pass up. I highly recommend all of these films to anyone, and if you have some extra time on your hands, you should escape into these stories to temporarily free your mind. I'm Will Seckman for Atherton On Air. Have a great day. One of the ways you can get more involved is by participating in Atherton's Black Student Union. Here is BSU President Damon Duvall with more. My name is Damon Duvall, and I'm the president of Atherton High School's Black Student Union, or BSU. We at BSU seek to provide a safe space for black students to come and share their opinions and views on the world around us without fear of persecution or judgment of any kind. We also engage in volunteer projects in order to better the community around us. The BSU's main purpose is to amplify the voices of the black students at our school. However, students of all backgrounds are welcome to come and learn more about black history and culture. If anyone watching this feels like they want to become a member of this organization, please visit us on Instagram at AthertonBSU and click the link in our bio to visit our brand new website. Thank you, and I hope to see you soon. Along with the BSU, we have dozens of other clubs here at Atherton as well. They're operating virtually while we are in NTI. Here's one club for you strategic thinkers out there. Uh, I'm sorry, sweetheart. You are not it. So make sure to email Mr. Cooksey for more about the chess club. And here's an extracurricular suggestion for all you musically inclined students out there. Hi, my name is Lucy Champelli. And I'm Zoe Galvin. And we are members of the Bel Canto Choir. That's one of four choirs here at Atherton. We have Bel Canto, Chamber, Ladies Ensemble, and Men's Ensemble. When you first join choir, you'll be in one of the ensembles. And as you grow as a singer and a performer, you will join one of the others, Bel Canto or Chamber. Bel Canto has desserts in the spring, and Chamber has madrigals in December. All of the choirs perform at two concerts during the school year, the spring concert and the winter. Through choir, you can learn many amazing traits like creativity, teamwork, all in a supportive environment. Yeah, and you can meet some of your best friends through choir, like I met Lucy freshman year. So if you're looking for a group of amazing people from all grade levels at Atherton, join, join choir. Thanks to Miss Cumberledge students for sending us that. And if you have any story ideas to suggest for Atherton On Air, or would like to submit a video you create, make sure to follow us on Instagram at Atherton On Air. Again, that's atherton.on.air. And finally today, with all the extra time we have in our hands during quarantine, it's the perfect opportunity to think outside the box and explore cooking in new ways. Atherton On Air reporter Elizabeth Satterley shows us how. If you're bored in quarantine, one thing you can do is make a DIY solar oven. You need aluminum foil, parchment paper, an X-Acto knife, an empty pizza box, material to make s'mores, and dark colored paper. Black works best, but you can try with other dark colors. 
The first thing you need to do is measure and cut the paper to fit the bottom of the pizza box. Then you need to use the X-Acto knife to make three cuts to make a medium sized flap in the top lid of the pizza box. Then flip the flap up and wrap it with aluminum foil. The foil is most important on the inside of the flap because it will be reflecting the sunlight into the box to cook the food. Then take the plastic wrap and wrap it around the top lid, focusing on the hole left by the flap. You may need to use tape to hold it in place. You can repeat this on the other side of the lid as well in order to thicken the plastic barrier. Next, assemble the s'mores in the center of the paper in the middle of the box. Shut the box, put the box in sunlight, and then aim the sunlight into the box using the reflector flap. You may need to reposition the box to make sure that it is continually getting exposure to sunlight. And this is the finished product of your solar oven when you make a s'more. That's all the time we have for now. Thanks for watching and remember, what you do makes a difference.